Hey there everyone, this is Yui. Welcome to episode 4 of All the Mods 3 Expert. Today we're going to get a bit into Botania so we can finally make some obsidian, because that'll unlock a bunch of stuff for us. So, let's get to it. Now, between episodes, it's nighttime again, of course, I did a bunch of exploring, a little bit of uh, grinding, just some general stuff. I made a building here, we're going to get to that later, and there's a little zombie spawner there that I took from uh, the place that was close by, to the southeast a little bit. One thing I will say, before I get too far, is my pickaxe now has a sponge binding, which allows me to have silk touch. I don't, I can't mine stuff very well now, like coal or lapis. But I can pick stuff up. I can get smooth stone a lot easier. And I can pick up grass blocks and all that fun stuff. I love silk touch and I usually always use that as my main pickaxe. Now to get a sponge, if you go to your map and you go to say an ocean, which to me is we are somewhere over here. Southeast to me is an ocean. If you go close up and zoom in, you you'll see a boat added by cork and inside that boat will be a bunch of chests and you have a good chance to get a sponge from there and so that's where I got my sponge well I got six of them but I only needed one so before too much stuff goes further I also have two additional hearts you can see at the bottom that is from spice of life carrot edition so I'm gonna make a book with a carrot and a book ironic <laughs> I am going to add that to my Akashic Tome and just open it up. Where is it? Uh, it'd help if I knew what it looked like. There it is. So in here, this will tell you how many foods you've eaten. So I've eaten nine. Uh, the first five will get you two hearts. It looks like ten will get you another. You can get a total of ten hearts, it says. So you don't need to eat a whole ton of food. Well, maybe you do. I don't know. It might scale up a lot more. But it tells you the foods you've eaten. So for me, it was pretty simple stuff. Rotten flesh, some wild berries, rice, some raw meats, and, you know, just stuff like that. If you don't want to make the book, you could do slash food list, base, size. And that'll tell you how many unique foods you've eaten and how many more you need to increase your health. All right. So last... We left off, we were going to get into Botania, but stuff went awry because we needed a bucket. But now I've got buckets. So now we can make some stuff. The first thing is going to be some cheese. Six buckets of milk, pretty simple. The other thing we need is dough. And that's going to be four wheat and a bucket of water. And I need, I don't know how many, 6 times 4, 24, plus 8, so 32. There, that should be good. I'm going to just split that up. I've already made some, not enough. Wait. Actually, I should check that, because that might not be the case. Oh yeah, it's cooked. You need some for lasagna, and you need some for donuts, which is just eight. That's where those numbers came from. All right, so while that's going, we can make, just put steak in your crafting table, get you the ground beef for the lasagna. Oh no, we need tomato sauce. I didn't even look at that. Oh boy, tomatoes. From... Do I have tomatoes? I've got to have them somewhere. Because I have a ton of stuff. There. And I... Nope. Alright, let's do a quick planting test. Because some of... Okay. Random zombie noise. 
Yep, some of these need special growing stuff from Rustic, which means we're gonna need... Oh, I don't even remember what they're called. They're like, uh... So the rope is for grapes, so stakes. Just wooden planks. Let's set a couple of these up. Four. Uh, actually, four is good. So, up above, you'll barely see the, uh, the outline of it. I've made a little area way up top. Base is down there where I am going to set up some stuff. You'll notice I have villagers. So when I was out exploring, I got the uh, summoning pendulum from random things. And with this, you can carry around a horse, but you can also steal villagers. <laughs> so I uh, I went to the town that was really close by, stole some villagers, and don't you think about going anywhere. So I carry my horse with me. And I will go take some librarians later, maybe some farmers, stuff like that. But this here is going to be the Botania area. Over here I have a small farming area. But like I said before, I got Silk Touch, so I have Redstone. You can get these, these red orchids. You can just get them simply by breaking grass. Like you do most other seeds. And I have a ton of wheat. And the whole bottom outlining the farm is apiaries full with bees, and the back has an extra one high, because I got tired of grinding wood for now. I will wait till we get some ore excavation going, and then I'll uh, keep going. So put the stakes down, put the tomatoes in there, and you'll see they grow pretty quick because of all the apiaries. But I will grind that off camera so we don't have to worry about it. Actually, I'll probably do that now, because I think we need that. Yeah, I'll do that now, so I'll be back in a moment. Alright, so little mistake. Uh, rustic tomatoes will not work. You need to use the XL Food Mod tomatoes, which the seeds look like that. Little red ones. But I did use the other tomatoes. Actually, I used them both to increase my hearts again. So you put that through the smelter, you get yourself some tomato sauce. Get all our dough. Now we can make some lasagna. I'm doing four of these. I'm also going to do ooh, three glass bottles. <laughs> I'll take it. I like free stuff. Okay, uh, donuts. Donuts. These. Make four. Oh, I only needed one of those. My bad. Well, that's all right. I get to eat the other ones. I suppose. Is that everything? No. Fletching stuff. So grab some leaves. Go over here. We're doing this. This one. Fletching. I'm just going to make, yo, whatever, we'll make four of those also, and just for funsies we'll grab this, we'll grab some bone meal, uh, yeah sure, my comma okay, and it's okay-ish. Oh, I also set up some bees that I stole. Uh, they're, they're not doing much, but they produce honeycomb. With the honeycomb, you can make an uh, apiarius backpack. The honeycomb's used for the chest, which means you can pick up all the bees you want. I only have 10. I don't have a lot. But you can pick them up. You can store them in here. It's just a way to declutter your chest because I know bees don't stack well, so if you like collecting them, I don't know if I'll get too much into bee breeding, but, you know, that's okay. Alright, so we need... that's good. Got that. Cover that later. 
Oh. Actually, we should probably do that real quick. Since I did this piecewise, I did not get credit for the quest. I cleared it out by making another stone drums. Oh, this is so slow. Where's my ore excavation? We need to go to the nether. Assuming Manuin is still gained in the nether. Which might be just a crazy assumption. 27. You good? Oh, I was looking it up. Our crates are here, locked behind tier 1 coins. We can do that. Honestly, I don't know at this point if I'll get them. I would... Oh, maybe. I don't know. We'll get the time in a bottle, I think. Uh, compact machines, probably. I like them. All right, that I can do. Cobble gen over there is still going strong. Hammer here. Boom. Let's just go grab... Uh, is it up here? There it is. Like, I know I have some. Now we can grab, say, treated wood planks, living rock, some living wood. Now everyone's happy. And just put it back, because <laughs> I don't know what we need it for just yet, but we'll get there. All right, back to making these flowers. Not the quest. So we need gray, yellow, and red. Gray, yellow, and red. Yes. Donuts and that. Okay. This, this. Sure, whatever. What's this one? Green. Red. Oh, it's lime. Red and green. Lime. Red. I am almost out of. Two red. Yep. One green. And there. Something like that. We'll see. You can, if you want, right click with an empty hand. It is sometimes easier, I suppose. I don't know how many of these we'll actually need, so that's why I'm making four. Because I don't know which setup I want to do. But there we go. We got those. We're going to need spreaders now. Iron plate, slabs, alright. And... White petal block. That's harsh. I need a crafting table up here. Alright, let's grab that. Living rock, living rock, living wood, where you at? And do I have an extra crafting table? I might, but I don't see one. I know I have the uh, crafting table on a stick, but I use that more for compressing stuff on the go. I just want something nice and conveniently located. Actually, put it over here. Actually, that's probably a bad spot, too. <laughs> oh, well. Whatever. Oh, I need iron plates. 
So we have to make the cheap mana pool. Because the other one, yeah, Energized Glowstone. Or, or Tachnic we could if we could make the machine. Uh, no. Mana Diamond. I don't even have diamonds yet. We need Iron Plates. Let's make... Four. I want to say four. Four mana pools. That way I can do the mana spreader stuff later. Do I have everything for the... Uh, not spreader. Splitter. Mana splitter. This guy. Which at least that hasn't changed. Let's grab some iron while we're here. Or not. Wait, no, I turned it into blocks. Okay. <laughs> We're good there. I know it's a little little early for them. But we'll just stash them up here. Alright. Make those. Seared stone. Ah. Up, down, up, down, up, down. At least it's free. I'll get two of these because I really don't know how much mana these flowers produce because I never use them, actually. It is forcing me to use flowers I don't use. Because I always go with the exo flame or the endo flame setup. And that works really well. So let's go with... We'll just put them in the corner. I'm going to put one down, put a spreader on top, get rid of it. And then put them down. Which one's this? You eat food, you eat leaves. So I'm going to put you over here. I'm doing it in this order so I don't have to bind the flowers to the spreader, but we still need a wand of the forest. Is that the same? I hope it is. Looks good. And we will go with uh, cyan. Because we got plenty of it. And then for now, we'll just set them up right here. Put them in a nice little grid. You can go here. You can go here. All right. Let's see. Do I place you? Oh, yep. There you go. Eat up. I sheared a bunch of leaves using my comma before. Let's get some food. Oh, here. You know what? You can eat some you can eat some berries. Yum yum. Oh wait, no the No, not the Gormoralis, the the Cakey Maris or whatever it is. I've used that one. You it uh, just There you go. Really? I just ate all that. I don't know if it wasted that, though. And this is not working. Does it have to be... They don't... Oh, they give it time, I guess, to decay? That's fine. Let's grab some... Yeah, we need a mana pickaxe head, so let's grab some iron. There it goes. Oh, it's timed. Yeah, it's, it's clearly timed. Here you go, eat up. That means I could set up a tree farm. And they can just eat from that occasionally. Okay, iron. Two ingots. 
and this is going to be deceptively high. <laughs> really? Oh, is it different? It is. It's different. I should have checked the recipe. Why did I assume it was the same? Alright, iron can go back here. I have some refined iron. Let's see. That's still not enough? Gosh, these things are horrible. Yep. Alright, so I am going to generate a bunch of mana, just enough to get two, four, I suppose four. Oh, there we go, we can make one. <laughs> Take, like, half the pool. Yeah, I'm going to get about four mana steel, and I'll be back. Alright, and we're back. So, one mana steel ingot takes a fourth of the pool. So once it hits that line... Oh, that one can't. But when it hits the line, it can uh, do one ingot. I made six, so that way I can make the splitter. And then I have two for my pickaxe and two for a single repair kit. So I'm going to bind these to the splitter instead by sneak right clicking and sneak right clicking. And that should balance out the load. There you go. And that'll fill up all the pools, because these things, they are horrendous in what they hold, which is not much. But let's go back down. I made a pickaxe cast. So now I can throw in two of those, let it go. I'm going to offset these just a little bit. That way I can hopefully swap it out. Yeah, that should be good. We'll find out. And then once we get this pickaxe, we'll be able to mine pretty much everything in the overworld, I believe. Including obsidian, which is what I need. It's weird how it does that. I turn you off. Swap this out, and then turn you back on. Yoink. It's mine. I'm faster than you, Servo. Ha ha ha. Alright, so... Now we can swap it out. Let's see. Durability goes up. By a bit. Oh, adding the sponge also increases your durability by quite a bit, so I recommend doing that if you don't mind Silk Touch. And there we go. Now I have seven of these, which are useless, because <laughs> everything else is flint. Yep. So what I am going to do now is grab a bucket, I already had one, bucket of water, I am going to go mining for some obsidian after I clear out my inventory. Good enough. And then once I get obsidian, we can get into this stuff. Yep, there we go. So I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to go just get obsidian. You know how to get obsidian, so it's nothing special now, now that we can actually mine it. So I'll be back in a moment. All right, and we're back. And I realized how much I hate mining obsidian because I usually don't do it like that. But I've got a little over a stack, which should be very sufficient for now. But one of the things I want to do is an item collector. In my journeys, I found, well, one Ender Pearl so far. And that's because I forcefully stole it from an Enderman. But we can make an item collector. I found glowstone dust from the, uh, what do you call it? The Astral uh, Sorcery Temple things. So I'm going to upgrade it to the advanced one. 
And with that was this junk. So through your travels, uh, this is just iron. Iron bars, iron, and stone to get some fans. A fan, if you flop it down and you give it a redstone signal, will push things decently. Like, it, you gotta be semi close. Like, if you're here, it's not gonna work, but if you stand there, yeah. So, with that, we can set up a basic mob farm. Oh, we need iron. Uh, we have some, let's see, actually I want diamonds, but that's not happening. We'll go with iron spikes. We'll need three batches, unfortunately. Do I have swords? I don't know if I do. Here we go. Uh, one. One. <laughs> okay. Got one sword. It saves me a, a, a teeny bit of iron. And we're out. I want three. Right? Three should be... Three should work. Alright, let's do it. One, two, three, one, two. Three, one, three. There, good enough. That, okay, so this redstone wire. So if you're familiar with immersive engineering, usually you'll use it for power, like say the LV, okay, fine, be that way, at immersive LV. So you can use wire connectors, which is just copper and clay. You can uh, route things around with the relays, but you can use the wires so you can move power between machines. Well, similarly, it has this redstone wire connector, which is electrum, so gold and silver, redstone and clay, but you need aluminum, and I really don't know how to get aluminum. I, I'm hoping it's not really the end, because there's a an end version. And I don't see a Y level on any of these that pop up. Oh, there's nether. Maybe it's nether ore. But similarly to how we did steel, if you go around you can find iron rods, you can find aluminum rods, and you can find those steel rods. So, plus you also just find basic aluminum ingots from immersive engineering. So with that, I made some of these wire coils. So what we can do is come over here and set up just a little one here what is this one two three four one two three four five six here here one two three four five six here one two three four five six and there's a flower there i think the bees are producing flowers or because it's the biome i'm not sure And there. And then on top of these, we can just toss one of these guys. Nothing super exciting, but it'll. you don't have to do this. You can give each and every one an individual lever. I am doing this for the sake of being nice to myself. And the last one I am going to drop, say, here with the lever. Now, by default, uh, you can't tell unless you have your hammer. But by default, all of these are set to input mode, which means they will accept a signal. We want to change the ones on the fan to output. And we want to wire them all up. So we'll have one input, and in this case, eight output. And then the fun part comes of uh, clicking the fans, because <laughs> they're all facing the wrong way. And there we go. So now, if I flip this lever, all of the fans will turn on. 
That's great and all, but they're all facing the wrong way. So you can come up to the fans and you can right click them to turn them in the direction you want. So I am going to turn them all facing the center of the mob farm. Roughly the center. You know, it's not going to be perfect. So I'll be back in a second after I finish all of the fans. Alright, so I have all of the fans pointing in the middle. Usually you can sneak right click to uh, turn them the other way, but since carry on is in here, I think it's jacking it up. So you have one direction. If you overshoot it, then you got to go full circle again. Because for some reason you can pick those up, and I don't know if that makes sense or not. So this is what my inside looks like. It is just a pillar here to just place the spawners and allow room underneath for them to go. I will get rid of these torches eventually. I was using this as a manual mob farm for a little bit for this zombie, but we can finally get rid of this stuff. Because now we have a collector. And definitely go explore. Exploring is your friend. You get... Oh, I was going to say I forgot the spikes, but no, they're here. So I'm just going to line the bottom of this with spikes. And it's going to be a not-so-happy experience for anyone that lands on it, including me, if that happens. I'm going to throw the collector onto this chest. So anything that gets dropped in this area, get picked up, thrown in this chest. Now what we can do is if we go, uh, I'm going to leave that for now. Let's dump this. I don't need any of this stuff with me. All right. So way over there to what's almost Crimea River. <laughs> it's not quite, but it's there. Go explore and open up your waypoint so you can, you know, fast travel. But I found an Enderman spawner. So if we go over this way, quite a bit. It's what, 300 blocks away from here. But that's what good old trusty horsey is for. I should have gotten a faster one. I got one that has high jump, but it doesn't matter. So I'm going to just... Oh. I was not happy there loading in. You will find when you're out exploring, I need to get a little higher. Uh, buildings sort of like this. They are quite dangerous, so be careful. They're very... Yeah, it's just broken down. Sometimes they'll have a roof. The main thing to look at, how are you? Not your garbage. Is a ladder. A ladder that goes down. And when you see this, this means that there's going to be some sort of spawning system down below. So this is like a mini dungeon, kind of. And in here, I think I found my magic hood. Magic hood is good. It is it's not very strong, but it has unlimited durability, so that is great. I've already cleared a lot of this out. Not quite all of it. But you'll find spawners here. You'll find chests. Like, I've been blocking off the paths I haven't quite cleared. I know there's a skeleton spawner back here. Oh, I forgot my torches. Get down here. Too late. Oh, why you gotta be a butt? Ow, there's another one. But yeah, so you can clear it out, and one of the spawners I found is over here. It's an Enderman. Now you're thinking, it's great and all, but you are currently, oh, <laughs> 2,800 uh, meters away from base. So here's a little secret for you. Clear out your hand with carry-on. Boom, pick up the chest. Or the, uh, the spawner, the chest, whatever you're using. 
I am going to delete this waypoint because it is no longer true. There's also a mine shaft here. This connects to a mine shaft over there. <laughs> but we can do the slash home command with something in our hands. There we go. And see, I still have the spawner. Oh, the doors. Don't spawn something. Don't. There we go. So what we could do is take this, throw it in. Fans are off. Fans are off. Okay. We could throw it in here, say there. Grab this guy, throw him there. Grab my shield because it's dangerous. Get in the hole. Or don't, whatever. Okay, let's... Give me this. Make this a little quick. Come out here. I have a couple blocks. And then... Boom, fan. Now, they're gonna fall down here. Hit the spikes, get killed, drop stuff. So now we have a very basic automatic mob farm. It is nothing super spectacular. We'll upgrade these iron spikes to diamond later, once we get them. And it's noisy, but there we go. Ender pearls! That's what I wanted. I wanted ender pearls. And now we have a supply of ender pearls. And a wild enderman who will probably kill me. Yeah. I'm just going to ignore him. He'll leave eventually. What? Is that all? Yeah. I think we'll do machines next time. We got the Botania half of things done. We need to get into the machine side of things. That way we can go to the nether. So then that's going to be it for this episode. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye.